let me show you another example here. This this, this mythological uh, thinking that we have on, on drug development instead of nutrition. When referred to the uh, Nixon's 1970 war, uh, 1971 war on cancer, I was at that time very active in my research and I paid a lot of attention. I was in cancer research and I know something about this too. Kind of interested in following it. Finally, after 30 years, 2004, okay, a couple of uh, some uh, Australian American can uh, researchers came along and said, "Hey, why don't we go back and look at at uh, you know, how well these all these chemotherapy drugs are working?" started in 1971. They had access to a, a load of data, a huge amount of data that, that rep represented about 22 different cancers and the drugs that were being used for those patients that the cancers. Uh, they started to ask a simple question from this large amount of data. Hey, are these drugs working? Are they working? Well, the best way they had to estimate that, or they, they, one way at least, they, they thought a good way to estimate that was Determine what is the five year survival rate of cancer patients taking the drugs. If the drugs are that great, we ought to be increasing five year survival, right? It increased it only by nothing. That seems significant. By nothing. In fact, for a lot of these drugs, he came with, I'm talking about cytotoxic chemotherapy drugs. These are drugs that are being developed to kill cancer cells, okay? So all these chemotoxic uh, drugs, you know, all these, all these patients over the years, they actually cause new cancers. The average cost of building these kind of drugs, just one drug, 1.3 to 1.8 billion dollars, that's figures of 2014. We spend a lot of money going down this road trying to figure out a drug to kill the cancer cells with this kind of result. Well, that sort of became known in the community, I have to say, it didn't make much news, it became known as though the, the industry kind of shifted course a bit. They were coming up with immunotherapy drugs and well, there's the whole new concept of some other kinds of drugs. But in any case, these are still being used to great extent. So Nixon's 1970 war on cancer failed. It failed. It was there very much de hotly debated in the early 1970s. I don't have a chance to go into the history of that, what went on at that time. But it really was an attempt to, uh, let's say, bring cancer under control. So the story went. We're making more drugs, especially good drugs to kill. Okay, so that's another example of just going for a drug to do something and we don't cut, get much out of it. Let me turn your attention now to uh, using that same thought. One chemical at a time doing this thing. I'm going to turn your attention now to nutrition. And... Uh, Let's say cancer in this case, another kind of cancer, um, and a nutrient in particular. Here in 1981, this report came out, and I got excited about that at the time because it kind of helped me to think through some of the things we were doing. But in any case, here's a plot, really interesting plot, a three-dimensional plot, as you can see here. Um, and along this axis, here's uh, non-smokers, here's people using smoking, or smoking for less than 30 years. Then more than 30 years. This is one that really counts. This is where these are the people who get lung cancer from smoking. Okay. Look at look at here. See it. You go up here, more, more cancer, 30 years. Okay. Now look over the next axis here. They learned that when they, they happened to measure the amount of consumption of beta carotene, because at those days, beta carotene was just they were just learning kind of an antioxidant, made it be good, you know, for, for blocking uh, lung cancer, maybe. So they did a study showing that people who consume more beta carotene, going from here to there, more beta carotene, look at this. The risk of lung cancer dropped to almost the same level as non-smokers. I mentioned that one time, got quoted, unfortunately, about that time, uh, got chastised by some colleagues who wanted to bring uh, the smoking under control. And I agreed with them, quite frankly, because bringing smoking under control is a big deal. Uh, but they didn't want me to mention this anymore. Don't say this there. The study didn't get much play or anything like that. But in other words, people consume more beta carotene, less lung cancer. Where's that come from? Plants. So it's really an indication of plants. But nonetheless, some people in this business wanted to check out beta carotene itself. And they thought that if they put beta carotene in a pill, and this was a study done by a Finnish group and an American group working together. If they put beta carotene in a pill and then gave it to people smoking, maybe they could knock down lung cancer. Big study, actually, 29,000 male smokers. 
We're going to follow them for eight years. They told us it's going to take at least eight years to see any effect. It had to be stopped at five years. At five years, they measured beta carotene intake among these people. People consume more beta carotene and had less lung cancer. Look at that. It's the same as what I just showed you. Just a repeat. That's statistically significant. In five years' time, people eating more beta carotene, eating that, that kind of food, their risk of lung cancer was significantly decreased. People took a beta carotene supplement, increased it. To me, there's a bell ringer. This has been shown now quite a number of times for other mixtures too. And I had a, I was in, in position to see this in, in uh, broad daylight. I was the representative of the Academy on, on a major federal trial on you know, the claims being made by vitamin supplements at the time. It just came out. What this says is that this nutrient, beta carotene, wonderful nutrient, antioxidant, it's pro vitamin A, that's what it is. People consuming more of this here stuff along with all the other good things in plants, lung cancer is down. People using a beta carotene supplement is up. You can guess yourself how much you'd make of this. The, the food beta carotene consumed with all the other things, not just because of beta carotene, it's all the other things working. That's called holism. I like that word, the holism. With the, um, I'm 10 for that W to be there. Uh, reductionism, that's the concept exactly opposite. That's where we tend to work on one thing at a time. One drug, one nutrient, one disease. That's the, that's the name of the game for the entire medical industry. Reductionist, nutritious, holist. I like to think of nutrition being redefined. It involves multiple nutrients, multiple mechanisms for each nutrient. Each nutrient has my, you have the uncountable number of mechanisms. It's, a, it's a, just a network of things all working together like a symphony, each nutrient. But there's a lot of nutrients. All working to create effect on multiple diseases along with multiple health improvements. What do you get out of that? This is my baseline after all this years of complexity and wandering in the weeds and through the swamp. Uh, I think what, what we first have to do is acknowledge the complexion. It exists. There's no way under the sun that we can reach in and pull that pull out apart and actually create total health. So it's a whole food. That's my de definition of what a whole food is. It's the justification for consuming whole foods. Let us consume the whole food with all of its nutrients. Let Mother Nature decide what to do with those nutrients. And that's another whole story to do with those nutrients once we consume the food. So it's whole food, plant-based. That's what it is. And, and the animal story that I just told you, animal protein story, is, is that. Let's consume plants. Let's consume, make them whole. We see spectacular results. When my son, Tom, who I understand is presenting in this the same uh, program here or tomorrow, but in any case, when he and I were doing the China study in, back in uh, 2002 to 2004, uh, I was trying to put together the story, uh, trying to tell this to the public, thanks to my wife telling, telling me to stop complaining, you know, take the science I was wor working on and complaining about it, tell it, go to the public. So that's the way it happened. And we were writing a China study, Tom and I were. And, and uh, so I was interested as we put that story together to see if it kind of would work. Um, that uh, I looked at looking into the uh, research literature and peering back, and I found a bunch of diseases for which there had been evidence produced at the time, incomplete evidence. Researchers didn't know it themselves, but sort of evidence that over some years, evidence had been arising that all these diseases here could, in fact, be prevented, if you will, maybe slowed down, suspended, and even cured. Thanks to Dr. Essen and Dr. Ornish and some others. Okay, whole food plant based diet prevents suspension of cures these diseases. That's a big load of all kinds of different diseases. This thing wasn't just for cancer, it wasn't just for cancer of rats. It wasn't just for the cancer of humans. It was, you look at something really fundamental going on here. The whole food plant based nutritional effect is broad, it's very fast. Anybody in this business will tell you, you know, you can see changes in cholesterol. For example, when people put on this diet, the cholesterol will drop like a rock in a matter of a day or two. So it's fast, just as fast as any drug. Furthermore, dietary intervention with nutrition, it reverses disease in a lot of cases. I, I'm going to change the word. I think that we can say it treats the disease. That word treatment should not be left to the community who are using drugs. 
we can use the word treatment in regards to nutrition. There's no side effects. They should be formed.